Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the second part of the 85th week of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where today I'm going to be discussing how my opponent, Venter, plays. Um, as you see, I'm in the big blind here. Right here, whenever this player limps the cutoff and you have ace to clubs on the button, you should almost always raise. And the reason, reason you want to raise here is because you don't really want the blinds coming along in this spot. And it's never really bad just to raise preflop and either pick up the pot right now or get called by the limper and then be able to bet a lot of flops and pick it up there. So this is a spot where I think raising is 100% mandatory. I would virtually never limp in this spot. Uh, what limping does is it allows the blinds to come along, so now you actually have to hit a hand in order to win the pot a lot of the time. And that's really not what you want. You don't want to have to hit your hand in order to be able to put money in the pot. You want to be able to just pick up all the pots that your opponent does not hit. So anyways, he does limp, and it comes 7-3-2, and everyone checks. And I think this check on the flop is perfectly fine. If they checked me here, I would probably throw out a bet just to try to pick it up. You know, you don't really want someone with 10-9 to get a free card and then end up winning the hand, where, as if you bet right here, they're just going to fold out all those right now. So if I had the ace-8 here, I would probably go for a bet of about 125. He likes to check, though, and he turns a pretty great card, the ace. Um... Interestingly enough, though, he gets bet into and then called. And at this point, I mean, this is a tough spot because you don't really beat many aces besides ace-4, ace-5, and ace-6. So if either of the, your opponents have an ace, you're probably behind. Uh, that being said, I think calling here is probably good with the intention of folding the river if uh, either player bets again. So this is a really tough spot where... One of these two players is going to have you beat almost every time. But at the same time, you're getting pretty good odds, and, you know, it's never really that bad to call a top pair. He gets the dream card on the river, and he gets bet into once again. And at this point, you can be pretty confident you have the best hand here with the ace-8. If you raise and get shoved on, I think you should probably find a fold. But at the same token, I, th I think you should definitely raise here purely for value. It's going to be very, very tough for J Card Shark to have better than Ace 8 here. So, I mean, really, the only hand you lose to is like exactly 4 or 5. So, I, I think I would throw in a raise here, probably to something like 1400. You never really want a min raise because that always looks relatively strong. And the last thing you want is to look relatively strong whenever you have a hand that um, is just relatively strong. It's not like a monster by any means. So, I like a raise here to 1400 or so. And right here, Jay Cardshark, you, you put him in a spot where it's pretty clear you have a monster, so Jay Cardshark's only going to shove if he, have, if he has a monster. But at the same time, you do give him pretty good odds to call. The interesting part about this, though, is that I really doubt Venter's ever making this play without a premium hand. And because of that, Jay Cardshark should probably fold, like I said. So, you have to be very careful on the river about turning your hand face up, and if you're never, ever, ever bluffing here, which I really doubt Venter or the vast majority of players are bluffing or ever bluffing in the spot, I don't really like the bluff. So um, that's going to be it for this video. Jake Cardshark does make a bad call, looks him up, and gets shown the bad news. If you guys have any questions or comments about this hand or any of the others, please feel free to let me know. There are forums at floattheturn.com. That's my training site. You can join the forums for absolutely free. You can check it out, post some hand histories, and I will be more than happy to answer them. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.